Uh, uh, so Kedar Maharjan, I see here. So I have made Kedar Maharjan also the co-host. So we have Linda co-host, Prazul co-host, and uh, Kedar Maharjan co-host. So all of you have a full access of this wherever needed. Uh, so I will just put everybody on the mute at this moment. And once Linda's presentation finished, then we have a Q&A session that anybody can ask their questions related to the presentation. And at the same time, if we have any questions that we receive from the Facebook, I'll be conveying, I'll be moderating on that too. At the end, and then uh, Prozor Gurzo, as usual, then yes, he will just give his insight and he will just uh, give the closing remarks and then we will just end the program. So good luck, Linda. Thank you. <laughs> So today is 5th of June, which is the first Saturday of the month. So as usual, we are doing our eHeritage, a virtual conversation session. With that will be episode number six. Today we have really a prominent scholar, Linda Eltis. So we are about to be live. I think we are live now. Zozalapa, namaskar, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Wherever you are, please accept my. So on behalf of all new organized in the USA chapter, we have been, yes, uh, doing this eHeritage every first Saturday morning. So morning in the sense that in the United States, but if you are in Europe, as well as if you are in Nepal, yes, it will be accordingly. So thank you so much for overwhelming support, overwhelming responses, and uh, all the positive vibes that you guys have been sending. So today, on behalf of all Neva organizing USA chapter, I welcome you all. And today, yes, we have one of the prominent prominent, prominent scholar, whom I personally also wanted from a long time to, yes, uh, have her presentation, Linda Iltes. So that Linda is not a, yes, the new name in the field of uh, Newa Heritage. So she has been really a yes, uh, well-known figure. So, but I have some of the bios that I would like to, yes, read uh, so that yeah, I can introduce her nicely. So, let me just yes, introduce Linda, Linda Iltis we have today. So Dr. Linda began her 46 year career as a NEPA scholar at the age of 19. First learning Nepali, then researching and publishing in ethno-historical study of Bandipur Bazaar, the hometown of her Nepali professor, Krishna Bhai Pradhan, who is now in Madison, Wisconsin, Thanks to the generous hospitality and friendship of Krishna and his wife, Bisnu, her mother and her sister, Zamuna, Linda attended Swasthani Bratakatha recitation in their home in Madison, Wisconsin, and learned about the Swasthani Bratha tradition, the stories and recitation practice, ultimately translating Swasthani Bratakatha and elucidating the strong role of women in ritual practice in Nepal, became the focus of our PhD dissertation and future studies of Newa literary and religious traditions and ritual performance. During her field research in 1981 to 1983, while translating the late Achyudananda Rajopadhyay's Newa edition of Swasthani Dharma Bratakatha, Linda was advised by many Nepali scholars and friends to spend time in the town of Saku, where according to Katha, the Salinadi River flows and where Apsaras enlightened Sandravati, a sinful woman about the virtues and blessings 
to be obtained from reciting the Gadeshwasthani stories and performing the Vrata, and where even the Nagas and Naginis were reunited by the Swasthani Prasad floating in, the, in that river. The late Saptamuni Bajracharya also recommended the recommended she explore a connection between Swasthani Katha and the ritual drama Jalapyakha of Harisiddhi. Jalapyakha will be the topic of today's presentation. For Linda, Saku, Harisiddhi, and the Kathmandu Valley, and Bandipur became her Swasthana due to the gracious hospitality and loving assistance of so many families, scholars, and teachers. She studied Nepal Bhasa with the late Ratna Kaji Vajracharya, the late Mani Gopal Zha and Parmananda Vajracharya, and regularly studied literature and manuscripts with Prem Bahadur Kansakar, Asakaji Pandit Vajracharya, and Kasinath Tamod. Linda's ongoing work on Newa culture includes extensive historical manuscript analysis, video documentation, and research with ritual, specialist, and performer of Jala Pyakha, Pachali Vaira Pyakha, Sikali Pyakha, Deva Maju traditional healers, Hindu and Buddhist rituals of Nepal, and Samanism. Her interdisciplinary publications feature studies of goddesses, space, place, and identity. Women's Agency and Identity in Nepal, Expressive Culture, Ritual Performance, and Spirit Possession. She authored a textbook, Introduction to Old Religions, Eastern Traditions, for a University of Washington online learning program, and has published numerous articles on goddess, traditions, and ritual dance drama of Nepal. With the hope of sharing and publishing more of her research, Linda recently retired from University of Washington in Seattle, Washington, after serving 28 years in administration and as a lecturer for comparative religion and South Asian studies programs. She earned her BA and MA in anthropology and her doctorate in South Asian civilization and culture from the uh, University of Wisconsin, Madison. So regarding the publications, she has so many publications, but the recent ones, just let me uh, give you a couple of uh, her uh, publications. Uh, in 2011, she did Seeing the Unseen, the Dance of the Harasiddhi Gods, that was published in Dabu Souvenir Group 36 Youth Club, Zagadamba Press, Nepal. In 2010, she did Retheorizing Religion in Nepal by Gregory Price Reeve, reviewed by Linda Eltis, Himalaya, the Journal of the Association for Nepal and Himalayan Studies, volume 28, number one, article 12. Similarly, she has so many remarkable publications that if I start mentioning those, then it may take long. So not to taking a long time, I would like to, yes, invite Linda and, uh, request for her presentation. So Linda, the floor is yours. Welcome. Jojalapa, thank you so much for your introduction and um, thank you everyone who's here. It's so nice to see all your faces um, and I'll get started right away. <laughs> so, um, oops. I have to make sure I, I share screen properly here. So let's see. Share. Okay. What do you see now? Do you just see uh, my um, PowerPoint? Yeah, yeah. I see the Jalapyakha, your PowerPoint, but if you can just enlarge and go and top and just click that, the small square, yeah. Okay. Yeah, now it's much better. That's better? Okay. Yep, great. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm going to be um, talking mostly about the, the Jalapyakan tradition um, and about the mass gods and the, and the dance drama and how they interact. So one of the one of my favorite quotes um, comes from a children's song that was told to me by Parmananda Vajrasharya. In Newari, it goes, Sue Moru Pyakan Swo Swo, Sue Moru Kane Moru, Sa Jakatayadu, Todune Sunano Hekalini. And it means look at the dance, look at the dance that you can't can't be seen, can't watch it, can't see it, only a voice is heard. Who is making this happen inside of me? Um, and that is such a, a wonderful idea, such a great quote, because it really describes a lot of what uh, we see in the Newar dance traditions, um, where there's an intimate connection with the, with the God. And, um, in some cases, the God comes in and takes over. Sometimes it's more controlled in an interaction. So I want to start with who are the gods? And, and in Harisidi, it's really the Dyojus, who are priests, who are the actual gods. And um, uh, you know, we might think, well, no, they're just inhabited by the gods, which in a sense is true, but they are considered to be gods. If we look at the mass dances, and we see that you see Ram Chandra, who's a, the hero of the Hindu epic Ramayana, but you don't see the Dyoju. You don't see the, the, the God who's behind that mask. And um, the Dyojus are really the ones who are making the dance happen. And the dances are about many things in Harisidi, uh, unlike some of the other dance dramas you find in Kathmandu Valley, um, which, are, which have the Navadurga or the Ashtamatrika or um, some of them have the Gompiakan, which is also Ashtamatrika. Harisidi has often been confused and they say, oh yeah, it's Ashtamatrika dances out there. But that's not what happens in Harisidi. These are all, many of them are local, the gods that relate to the local geography. Um, then you have Ramayana stories and some other things. So. Uh, it's important to keep in mind um, the nature of the Harisidi dances in, the, in that light. And you could look at different, try to figure out all the different stories in Jalapyakon, but I think the other important thing to realize is that for the Dyojus who participate, they're 29, um, there's an inner side to the story. There's an inner meaning. And, um, and that is primarily Nasadyo. Nasadyo, they have to get the Siddhi from Nasadyo. They get, um, and Nasadyo, if you consider who that is, it's primarily Nityanat or Mahadev, the dancing Mahadev, but he's also has Ganesh and Bhairav associated and that's a very inner part of the dance that most people don't see because Nasadyo in a sense is not a, a visual deity. He's sort of a hole in the wall in many of the shrines. So here's a picture. This was in 1982 when I first went to Harisidi and it was a 12 year mela for um, going to Pulchok Mountain, which is really high, but it's above Harisidi. And um, that is actually the reason they go there is because that is where the deities came from 
for the Jalapyakna. They were brought by the Tantric uh, Rajapadya Gayojuju from the, the summit of Pulchow down to Patan area and to Harasiddhi. But he had to bring them down. He had to sort of pull them down with his energy. So here you see, this was also a long time ago, 1987, but you can see the Harisidi temple uh, sticking up above the town of Harisidi and in the background is Pulcho Mountain. And Pulcho is one of four sacred mountains in the valley. <clears throat> so there's Pulcho Maju, Dilcho Maju, uh, Sipu, Sipucho, and what's the other one, Nagarjuna? Um, uh, anyway, um, so if you look at a map, um, they are relative to Harasiddhi, um, left and right here. And then you have Manjushri, who was actually married to those two. But to go back to Pulcho and what it brings to Harasiddhi is water and um, very very fer fertile um, agriculture. <coughs> and according to Kedar, um, he was saying that it's really the most fertile um, uh, farmland in the valley of Kathmandu, more so than many of the other towns and villages. It's, it's extremely fertile and um, it gets like double the rice harvest of many other places. And uh, so you see um, here people at harvest time winnowing the rice and drying it and preparing it. Um, again, this is back in 1987. Um, and in the foreground is the largest kichapuku, kichapukuri here, kichapuku in Harasiddhi. Um, So uh, the, 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 the agriculture is very strong in, in Harasiddhi. It's, it's what's brought wealth and um, been able to support the dances there. But the lands for Harasiddhi were actually, uh, are mostly endowed lands from kings who uh, set them up and there is Kuti support for the lands quite a bit. And now, even if it isn't farmed, maybe being leased for other purposes, it's it's still um, very uh, large amount of land and has helped to make the dance tra dance tradition keep going. Um, in addition to being performed in Harasiddhi, Jalapyaka is also performed in Kathmandu and Patan and Bhaktapur, and even as far away as Dolka. So um, uh, you can see here a picture of a dabu specifically made and dedicated to Harasiddhi uh, in the town of Dolka. And, and that's still there, I think. Um, this was back in 1988, I believe. Um, and the Diocham for them is in the background there in white. There's still a small shrine for Harasiddhi inside there. So this is also the 12 year cycle and it's only really during, I think the 12, 12 year cycle, well, just a year after that, um, that they will start going on some pilgrimages or not pilgrimages, but they'll perform. They'll be invited to different towns around the valley again to perform, but they don't do it all the time. It's usually just close to that 12 year uh, time frame. <clears throat> so this is what you might encounter or maybe would have encountered some years ago um, if you were to walk in and on the day of the Hari Siddhi Jalapyakam performance um, a very rich array of colors and masks and uh, music and people worshiping and enjoying the time there at the temple grounds. 
in front of the Harisidi temple. And it's a it's such a rich tradition. It's it's very captivating, and um, the masks are are so unique, and the co costumes and everything. You'll see a man in the foreground there. He's wearing the curtain. <clears throat> this is for the dance drama. So to introducing at the beginning of each performance, each scene, uh, they come out with this curtain, the gachi, and the beta who has this role is the one who um, holds it on his shoulders and then takes it away and the scene begins. You also see in this picture the bells on the dancer's feet and that's a very important part of uh, the initiation process for the, the Dioju. They, there's a gangara siddhi they call it, it's a bell, the siddhi of the bells. Um, so um, go on to this. And um, so when I first was recommended to go there by Saptamuni Bajracharya, this was really early in my dissertation research. It was like within a month of arriving in Nepal there to begin Swastani research. I met with Saptamuni Bajracharya. He was at the National Academy and he said, he said, well, if you're interested in drama things, maybe you should go see Arasiddhi because I think they have Swastani stories that they perform there. I said, oh, okay. And I found uh, Rajendra uh, Shrestha was one of his cohorts. And um, he said, I'll take you there, let's go. And then immediately at the Fulbright office, the, the, <laughs> the secretaries there said, oh, Linda, don't go. It, it's dark, it's, it'll be at night and um, you shouldn't go, you're alone as a woman. I, I said, oh, I'll be all right. Um, you know, then they had all these horror stories and um, it's, it's really too bad that there are some, there, there used to be anyway, uh, scary stories. I think even the Jesuit priests used to scare little kids and say, you know, well, we're gonna give you to the Hari City man. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, it's ironic because this very deity here who comes down is one of the first ones, Tamna Rikishwar. He's actually uh, one that women will go specifically to see the Pyakon because of his, um, he will ensure that they have the birth of a son. And so the first person who gets to bow to Tamna is the one who will, will certainly um, get a pregnancy. And tamna, tamana is when you're pregnant to be able to sustain uh, tamana, you know, uh, I don't know how to describe that, but it's, it's, it's like a secure preg pregnancy. <clears throat> so if anything, um, you know, it's, it's very pro-life, <laughs> Harasiddhi and uh, a beautiful uh, set of dances and so on. Um, <clears throat> but then there are other stories. So there are, there are stories about um, that they used to perform Jalapyakam for three months running. And uh, that's a long time to be performing dances every day, day in and day out. Um, and obviously at a certain point they couldn't do that because it was just taking up so much time. And as one Dioju said, not even a dog would watch. Um, uh, and it's not just that one Vyoja, I think a lot of people will um, say that when they think about those times. Um, <clears throat> so there are 29 Dyojus of Harusiddhi. Um, they are uh, broken up into two different categories or maybe three, you could say. Um, there are basically uh, this is this is the Dioju's walking in the town in a line and so when they go for certain events they actually have to put a cloth down and they walk along this cloth through the village um, to different locations and this one is called Takali Luigu uh, where they're actually being brought with the white cloth in a line. They normally once they become a priest, a Dioju, they will wear the white cloth like this all the time. <clears throat> so they're very dedicated um, practitioners. And 
<clears throat> so the the roles break down and oh sorry <laughs> I jumped ahead the roles break down into <clears throat> ten chabu and they have some they have roles that don't really change in any way those are fixed roles that they take on when they're initiated and then they also have um, then there are the other 19 gods or judges who play different roles that change every 12 years usually and so um, the the Chabu include some of the people you see here. They're um, ones who play some of the lead instruments and um, play some of the lead roles in the dance. And so you could kind of think about it in terms of lineages. Um, the three Mudyo, who are Balandyo, Mudyo and Kumaridyo. And the central Mudyo has different interpretations, but um, and then Ganesh. So those four are really the, the Mudyo for Har City, and collectively the three are known as Tri Shakti. But on the left, um, Balandyo is also referred to as Har Siddhi, and on the right, Kumari is. Uh, also uh, Rudra, Rudra Kumari, um, and Mudyo Adi Shakti. Mudyo is, well, we'll talk about her later. Um, and then you have two servants or attendants. Uh, one of them carries the Kalash, which is the representation of the deity outside of the shrine. We bring the Kalash down during the dances and take it to the Nasa chain or Nasa Dio place, Niba in the town. And then um, the other gentleman here carries the Kikimpa for the, um, for the Kalash and is also uh, financial, um, responsible for financial things. There's also the curtain bearer that we mentioned. And then um, there are the other 19 gods um, go through different sorts of uh, lineages, sort of they, they can start out as sort of um, uh, children, children of the um, Kishi, the elephant god, or they might be um, um, initiated, what do you call it, Dicha, Dicha students. Of, a, of another senior god. And at some point they come and become part of Kishi. They help dance the Kishi, the elephant god. And then they resume and start learning the trumpets and mantra and uh, help with the singing. Um, here's a close up of the two attendants and I'm showing you this because one of the Dioju's at least uh, was telling me the story about the two dogs. Um, and he said Kicha, and I don't know whether he meant to say Dinta, but in Nasadyo, there are always two dogs at the bottom of a Nasadyo painting. Well, not always, but often you find them there. They're like servants to Nasadyo. Um, so, and, and I think it's just a, uh, another way of thinking of them. So the Kishi um, is a huge mask, unprecedented, I would say, in the Kathmandu Valley. Maybe there's, I think there are a few other Kishi masks around the valley, but I think Hari Cities is one of the largest um, out there and very unique in its iconography, if you look at it. Um, the two eyes and the third eye above. And then in the center here is uh, of the trunk uh, where the nose begins. Uh, that's Nasadio. Um, so <clears throat> in, uh, there's a mask 
manuscript for Harder City. I don't know where it is, but I was I received a copy of it from a colleague and um, a photocopy of it, and I was really grateful to get that. Uh, so I could tell from this it confirmed a lot of the names of the deities um, and the iconography and. Um, you'll see how, even though this is an older manuscript, it's, they're maintaining the, the iconography quite well in the, in the tra trauma. Um, so one of the things they have to learn as Jojus is the language of the gods. And it, um, it's in the songs that both these this set of musicians that are, play, are playing in front of the dance platform sing and also on the ponga and in the drums, they all have bully that are meaningful, but it's not, it's not one for one understanding that, that the audience would normally know. Um, but people get, get to know the music and it's, it's remarkably consistent and accurate. I mean, it, it doesn't change from year to year. It really is uh, a very precise performing art tradition. And um, of course, the, the, the judges learn the meaning of the, of the songs um, while, when they're getting trained in private. <clears throat> and then once you learn your tradition and the next 12 years, you might pass it on to the next person who takes on your role and you move on to learn from your teacher, re take on their role. So it move, progresses uh, through every 12 years. Um, so you may not know all the meaning until you get to be pretty old um, when you start to know more, put things together. Um, the Kishi has two children that are born from his ears. I think in this one, in this one you can see these deities on either side of the, in the manuscript. Um, and those are Karna and Keshari. And um, they get born out of the ears of Nasadio as children. <clears throat> so you'll see this pattern of sort of uh, guru Shisha, uh, in a lot of the, a lot of the scenes that are performed, which um, also mirrors what you have in Nasadio traditions, where you have students learning from teachers, and a sort of a lineage, ongoing lineage. Um, the the Karna and Keshari, some would say, is. Uh, uh, they would also become Ganesha's wives, Riddhi and Siddhi. Um, and it's interesting because Kishi is kind of like an emanation of Nasadio. And having two children that then go on to be connected with Ganesh, Ganesh is Siddhi, Nasadio is Siddhi. So, there's these parts of Siddhi coming through here all over the place. Um, there's another scene of a character called um, Taku Taku. And this is a fairly unusual one, but these are also two, two um, students of Taku Taku. And there have been a couple people who said that Tarka, this might be Tarka the demoness and her two children, Subahu and Maricha. And um, could be because, but we don't have a lot of people saying that. Um, but in the next, one of the scenes that comes up after that, you have um, Ram Chandra and Lake or Maricha Lake and um, Ram Chandra defeats Lake in the dance. He, um, Lake comes and because Ram Chandra is doing a 
a fire sacrifice. And there's an oil lamp, a standing oil lamp that they bring out onto the lachi. Um, and the lache will come, is attracted by the, the smoke from the, from the fire sacrifice. And when he sees the fire, he tries to put out the fire to, to disrupt Rama. And so Ramchandra then, after, after Lakhi knocks out the light, then Ramchandra comes and um, fights him. Okay, um, then there's another, uh, we mentioned that the, the curtain that they use is a feature of Sanskrit, classical Sanskrit drama. Um, but there's another one with uh, Nagana, who this is, he's like a narrator or Kanima. And um, he tells the six stories, six secret songs um, about what the scenes are that will come up in the drama. He actually comes on early, earlier in the morning, but he's almost like a sutradhar. Um, and um, he's telling the stories to the woman there who is like a shisha. Uh, and you'll see, I hope we get to the video. You'll see him holding his hand out like this and he's telling, narrating. Um, the Bikramaditya is another important um, dance for the drama because Vikramaditya is considered to be the one who actually brought the dances to Harasiddhi um, from Ujjain. He brought the goddess Harasiddhi and established the, the dance tradition. Um, and historically in the Vamsavalis it's a tribute, they attribute him, his bringing of the, the deities to, to way back in the Kaligat era. Um, I always have to look at my own article to remember the dates, but it's like, uh, it would be Kaligat 2675, for instance. But I mean, that would be like uh, 426 BC. In any case, we know um, that um, the, the dances have been started, stopped, reintroduced, um, for many, many generations going back at least to the seventh century and probably before. Um, what form they had is not clear, but um, some of these Sanskrit drama elements are very interesting to note. And um, so Vikramaditya uh, actually battles the kings of the um, four directions and triumphs over them. And this is one of the reasons, this, this is another element of Siddhi, in my opinion, um, for this drama because the Kadga is featured prominently in this scene. They are, are fighting with the Kadga and Vikramaditya wins. Um, it could be the Kadga Siddhi is part of the what's behind this too, because you see that in other dance traditions in Kathmandu Valley. Um, Mahadeo comes out at a certain point, and this is probably what prompted uh, Saptamuni Bhajracharya to send me to the Harasiddhi, is that they have a dance about Mahadeo, and Mahadeo also dances with Agni, Agindyo, and that is a that is definitely a theme uh, story in the Swastani Pratakta. So it's an interesting feature. And um, Madhya is one of the uh, deities who is danced permanently by one performer for as long as they are alive. Um, and Agindyo is not that way, but uh, so. But again, uh, I think you could say there's sort of a uh, learning relationship there um, between Madhyo and Agindyo. In this case, it looks like Agindyo is uh, sort of deferring to Madhyo. Um, 
Tamna Dyorikishwar, we already talked about. Uh, very unique face and mask. Um, and then there is a dance that has the Pulchomadu from the mountain top and Dilchomadu. And in between, it's Manjushri or also Sikucha Madhyo. And of course, we know that Man Manjushri has two wives. And um, so this is sort of a story about two wives vying for the attention of their one husband. And the case of Pulchomadu is the Yatuma and the first, first wife and uh, Dilchomadu is the uh, Lituma. So um, actually, Manjushri or Sukuchamadyo is always favoring Dilsomadyo um, because she does the hard work. She does all the good things. Putomadyo is very haughty. She's interested in jewelry. Um, you can see from her headdress, she's very well adorned. Um, and she just uh, can't say enough about how she doesn't like the fact that, that he has a second wife. Um, oh, and, and uh, you can see Manjushri is, is always patting uh, Dilto Manju on the shoulder. And then we have the three main deities of the, of the drama and of the shrine. Um, but you have to consider um, Ganesh is one of those two. So it's three plus one. Um, these are their faces. If you look at uh, Balandio, it's actually androgynous with a mustache on one side and not on the other. And um, Mudio is, uh, it could be um, Badra, it could be like Udratara, but also uh, Gautam Badratariya was looking at one of the um, inscriptions that I had transcribed and noticed that he, she's referred to as Sri Bogini. And um, that's kind of an unusual connection uh, because there are only three known uh, references to Sri Bogini. It's a later inscription, but um, if, if that's the case, it, it definitely identifies, the inscription does, these three uh, identifies them and refers to them as Sri Bogini. Um, this is another picture of the, the deities with the manuscript uh, showing the masks and so on. Um, and that inscription was uh, dated Nepal Samvat 783. So uh, it's, it's um, an interesting thing to contemplate. There's only three other known places in South Asia where the Sri Bogini comes up, but clearly um, that ap appellation could also mean that one of the kings considered her, uh, considered this to be Sri Bogini. Um, and there might be other kings who see the Tri Shakti differently. Um, this is another view of the Balandyo uh, Harasiddhi um, with the half mush mustache and the androgynous form. If you, we, there's also a beautiful Dharani manuscript that um, Ashkaji Pandit and Patan shared with me showing the three, the Tri Shakti. And you'll notice that um, the center one has a sword and also a skull cup. Um, the sword, I think, is significant for understanding the Siddhi, uh, again, the Kadga Siddhi possibility. Um, I'm going to skip ahead here. And this is the Nasadiya form that you would see behind the Kalash in the, in the temple of Harasiddhi, but it's kept covered in secret. <clears throat> it's an 18 form, 18 arm form of. Um, and um, you see here Nasadio in another painting. Um, 
And that Nasadio shows up on the, um, the trunk of the red Ganesh. Let's see, here's another, well, before I go there, um, showing Kishi and a connection to a Nasadio painting that has almost very striking similarity. You can see the eyes and the, even the gudger on top of the head um, and so on. So Kishi is clearly connecting with Nasadio. And then on the Ganesh, red Ganesh image um, that comes out, Ganesh being one of the other main deities, the Nasadio is painted right on his trunk in the front there. Um, so again, it's this collection, collection of Siddhi, meaningful Siddhi ideas. Um, Oh, I'm so sorry. <clears throat> um, so one of the things that the Dyojus told me was that you have Mahadyo as Nityanat, which is a Siddhi, with Ganadyo, who's also Siddhi. And then you have, so it's like Hara with Siddhi, and that's Hara Siddhi. Um, so I kind of like that idea, um, way of understanding it. Um, but basically, we have a lot of layers of meaning in, in Jalapyako. It's very, um, very involved tradition. And, um, and not having one particular one single explanation is, is fine because there are so many historical layers to the tradition that I think you'll, you know, you're bound to run into a few that may contradict, but it doesn't mean that they aren't relevant for understanding what the meaning is in, in Jalapyaka. Um, and it's so, so rich. I mean, um, one day I came and found out that uh, around Jani Purnima, they, the gods all have to come down from the temple and dive in to the temple pond and swim across. And it's called Dalambuego Tiaka. And um, this year, when they do this, they're going to be uh, finishing by tying up the bells because they have to prepare and start teaching the next group of inductees into the dance tradition. Um, so nobody can play music while they do that and they tie up all the bells and so on. Um, in Patan, um, there is a, still the Soliagama, although it, it really uh, degraded over the years and I think they're renovating it now or perhaps and can mention anything about she knows of it. But uh, the temple Torana, which had the Nasidio and Ganesh, and, um, was, is no longer there. But you can still see this is where Gayo Juju, who uh, brought the tantric, who brought the deities down, um, lived and maintained a connection with Harisidi. The the big climax of the of the uh, Jalapyakon is the last one of the last scenes, next to last scene, where um, Sugriv of the Ramayana uh, or Sukrabir fights uh, Nangi, and uh, they have a big sword battle, and uh, Nangi is defeated, and here's Nang Nangi with his wife Tara. So um, I can show a little bit of that. Uh, do we have time to show a little bit of the sword fight? Uh, let's see. Oh, do I have to share? I probably have to share a different screen, right? I go there. That is correct, Linda. Okay.
And the other character you'll see here is um, Ram Chandra on the right. And Sukrabir is on the left there and Nagneet is a, has the big headdress. Here you see Bali is trying to beg Rama to help him. But ultimately he doesn't get that support. And you can hear him singing behind the mask there. And then Bali turns his direction or Nagi to uh, the three the tree Shakti and asking them for his ble their blessing. And he still doesn't really get anywhere with that. And Sukravir is still fighting him. And uh, because Bali is so strong, Nangi is so strong, he can't really, it's hard for him to defeat him. But what he has to do is he has to get the sword from the Mudyo. The Mudyo has a sword. You can barely see it there. And so he's about to get it. Okay, so he's, now Sukravir is going to get that sword. He grabs it, and now, now he will have his Siddhi. He'll have the Shakti to defeat Bali. And you can already see that Nangi Bali is starting to swoon. And um, he gets just gradually weaker and weaker and weaker. Um, I'll jump ahead here just a little bit. You can see here he's actually sitting down in front of the shrine. Um, so weak he can't even stand up. Um, so I know we're getting close to the end of the talk here. Let me just. I, I'm trying to remember what number to go through. 
I think it's right near the end, right? Okay, and this is the end for Bali or Nangi. He collapses and they take him off. And uh, basically, after that, they dance with the head of. Um, <laughs> They dance with the head of uh, Nangi. Sikrabir has a fake head. <laughs> so um, let's see, where's my share screen again here? I go back to. Okay, so I think I should stop there. Although um, here's a final picture of the temple. And just as I was looking at some of my old my pictures from 2012 when I last visited, um, I noticed that there was an inscription up on the on the temple um, roof line right under the eave. And now I want to know what that says. But uh, I'd like to thank everyone um, who has helped me to do research in Harisiddhi. Kedar Maharjan is uh, and his family were very instrumental in helping me to come back to City in 2012, when at a point when I didn't think I would ever get back there. <laughs> but uh, uh, all the people in Hari City were just so generous um, with their time and um, helping me to understand things. And um, they have such a lovely tradition there. And I, I'd like to just invite Kedar to say a few things if he has some comments about um, about things and thank you all very much yeah uh actually like the temple of our city is like a four story uh there are only like two uh, four story temples in nepal uh, one of them is uh, nala bhagwati and the other one is uh, her city uh, so this is one of the four story temples uh the two four story temples in uh, nepal uh yeah we were just discussing about uh linda has uh mentioned about the uh, 10 Chabus, uh, three Ganeshas, one Beta, and the 15 other gods. Uh, the ch 10 Chabus are very much similar to like uh, the management team of the whole uh, dance drama. So they take charge of uh, the whole uh, dance drama for the 12 year period. So they go to the uh, head of state every uh, 12 year and get that sort of like uh, Lalmor or uh, you know contract to uh, to run the dance drama for the twelve year period. So this year as well, like I've learned, like uh, they have already been there for uh, for uh, for the induction for the next twelve years, and uh, I think it was just like a couple of few few weeks back they went to the Rashtrapati Bhavan and get got those uh, got the contract uh, to run the uh, to run the uh, twelve year uh, dance drama for uh, in our city. Uh, the next three uh, gods, like Paladya, Mudya, and uh, Kumaridya, uh, these are the main uh, three gods uh, that uh, perform in the morning as well. Uh, they perform as the gods of ten directions, and uh, the one in the yellow mask is Paladya. And my family, like uh, we are in the lineage of uh, Paladya family. The middle one is uh, Mudya. They call as Matsindra Nath, but I'm not very much sure about that. Uh, and the third in the blue uh, mask is uh, Kumaridya. Yeah. So this is the morning one. Uh, Linda, if you could put the uh, evening one. Well, the evening one? Yes, please. Oh, okay. okay. I'll try to find it. I, yeah. I have um, the picture of the three faces. Oh, let's see. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. These ones. Yeah. 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 So uh, this is, yeah, this is the evening one. Uh, we also call it like Adi Shakti, the one in yellow mask. Uh, that's like half male and half female. Uh, that's Harasiddhi. The middle one is Tri Shakti. That has got like a three-eyed uh, goddess. Uh, you can see the eye uh, in the middle as well. And the third one is uh, Rudra Shakti Kumari. Yeah. So these are the main goddesses of Harasiddhi. Uh, 
Yeah, uh, you want to continue with uh, with the gachi, Linda? Oh, the gachi. Yeah. Well, I have that. Yeah. Uh, no, I I was just uh, I was trying to find that one picture that you had of the the three together, but I couldn't find it. Oh, uh, okay. That's in, in my PowerPoint, it's not there in the PowerPoint. Uh -huh. So uh, this, uh, you know, the induction, like it takes place like every 12 years. So if someone passes away, like uh, within that 12 period, even if it is the first year or the second year or the 10th year, they only induct on the 12th, 12th year. So that is like how it takes place. So this year, uh, my brother, elder brother is also going to be inducted uh, because my father passed away in uh, 2012. So uh, it's it'll be a new, new team. Uh, joining in September. Yeah. You want to add anything, Linda? Um, can't really think of anything. I guess we should open it for questions, although we're already at nine o'clock. So yeah. Uh, is it okay to have questions? Ramesh? Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Yes, Linda. Mm -hmm. So if you can stop sharing, then possibly uh, we can start the question. I will Pratul do and I will be as moderating on that. Okay. So we have uh, so many personalities here in our Zoom. So is there any questions that you would like to ask to Linda or Kedar Zoo? Miranda, yeah, I, I think that up. you have some. May I open yes, up the- Yes, uh, Yeah. Uh, I just so uh, Linda, uh, Linda Zhu, uh, I was wondering the word Zola. So did, did you find any kind of etymological uh, evidence that why that particular place or the dance is used the word like a Zola? Is there any evidence did you find in your you know, study or because a Zola represents like a, in Sanskrit is a holy water. Right. And then the people of that area is also, you know, Zala. So why the Newar word is not available instead of Zala? Is there mm -hmm. any significance of using the word Zala in that area? I'm just curious, you know, I just... Yeah, um, well, it's also referred to as Jantala Desh or Jatala Desh in the older inscription or from some of, some of the Vamsavalis and Jeshtapur. Um, just the pura, okay. Yeah, just the pura is another name. Um, I, I also wonder about the connection with Jal, because and I know the Hara City Diyojis come down from Pulcho, and they also manage this Godavari uh, um, thing. Godavari Mela. The, the Godavari Mela, right. So, I mean, it could be that there's a, a connection with water from that. And it's only every 12 years that they have that meal, but it's sort of coordinating the water coming from there. But- um, So when I, people say that I'm going to that area, how do you use the phrase? I'm going huh. to uh, place Zola. So how do you use that phrase in that, you know, like in your dialect? Zola when you, or Zola when you, or, did you hear any kind of a phrases? Oh, I'm going to that place, blah, blah. You know, I just trying to figure out, you know, because it, I'm, my interest is on dialectical, dialectical you know, variations right. and, and right. The, all the, you know, I'm trying to figure out the cognitive form from the ancient, you know, language of that area. So it makes me come, you know, interesting to figure out, you know, when the Zala is not in our war and borrowed from Sanskrit, and then if they use in a day-to-day -day life of Newa language, so how they use that, you know, I'm just curious you know, if you have any kind of, you know, recorded voice or recorded uh, evidence or anything, so you come across with them. Well, for me, I've, I've always heard them say Jalade. Jalade, okay. Or Jalade. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know what Kedar. Uh, uh, maybe Kedar may have because he belongs yeah. to that area. So, uh, so how do you spoken, call you know, I'm... The current like spoken language, what they call is like Zale uh, Winu, because that is the short form of maybe Zale Dele Winu or Zale yeah. Winu. Yeah, okay. Like, for example, for me from Zala, uh, if I'm going to uh, Kokona, Akona, 
uh, I would say Kona Wunyu, not Kona Wunyu, not Kokana Wunyu, Kona Wunyu. So maybe that is the short form of Zaladele Wunyu, Zale okay. Wunyu. Yeah. So definitely not from the Zalaka. Uh, no, not from Zalaka. Okay. That's all from me. Thank yeah, thank you for the question. And let me just move to Miranda, sir. Miranda? Oh, okay. So actually, I just wondered, this is a very basic question. Is Hari Sidi a place? <laughs> On the <I> maps, <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, in other words, the dance is named after the place, but the right. dance is called this Jaladesh or whatever word. Jalapyaka. Jalapyaka is the name of it. And, and Yawari, yeah. All right. right. So, Sitar. yeah. <laughs> Jalapyaka is the name of the word. Okay. Uh, okay. So and I'm, Jala is the okay. uh, place, yeah. So, I thought it was a deity name or something. So, uh, I just wondered I mean, you just got such amazing photographs, even though it's a dance. Mm -hmm. And so clearly you had a huge amount of cooperation. So were they posing for a lot of the, I mean, you got them at a still moment or were you actually doing? Oh, yeah, they were just, you know, just taking pictures they, during the dance, yeah. Oh, wow, well done. Wow, <laughs> very impressive. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of video and I wish I could have shared that more. Uh, if you're interested sometime around the weekend, definitely okay, share that with you if you like. Okay. Um, uh, but uh, it was just not practical in a Zoom meeting to show a lot of video. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to tell you anything about it at the same time. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Miranda. So I have one question for uh, Linda and one for Kedar. Yeah. So Linda, yeah, what I've seen is that uh, in Kathmandu Valley, what happens is that whenever we talk about the Diopiakon, is it mostly the Diopiakon are the related with the Ostamatrika. So in this case, in Harisiddhi, how is it related? We are mostly, yes, it's uh, when we are going through that, I just related that to the Ramayana with Rama and mm -hmm. Vikramaditya, who, is the, who was the king of one part of the India, right? So it mm -hmm. was related to that. So is it uh, something to, still is it has to something to do significance with the Ostamatrika or is it purely the different from Ostamatrika? I, I think uh, it's very different from, there's nothing in the Kyakon in Har City that relates to Ashtamatrika per se. There's a dance at the very beginning I didn't mention, which is a dance of the 10 directions done by what they call the Chabi. They're not Matrikas, they're male kings of the directions like you would have in a mandala uh, arrangement of, of kings protecting the directions. Um, and they, they dance that two by two for five dances in the morning. Um, so there's two kings dancing together and then another two sort of lining up along the axes. Um, um, uh, yeah. So, but they, it is, I would say definitely, um, you know, this still, this is very much a Diopyakon because they become Dyojus for such a long time. They, I mean, this is really a lifetime commitment when you're inducted. Mm -hmm. In the case of Ashtamatrika traditions elsewhere, um, usually it's for a one year cycle that you're inducted to perform. Um, in the case of Gompyakon, it's done every year, but you don't necessarily have to maintain uh, uh, sort of vows of of, you know, not eating certain things during the year for in the case of Gompiakon or in the case of, um, I don't know about Navadurya, I honestly maybe <laughs> very, and, you know, about Navadurya, but uh, I, yeah. I think most of the other traditions are, are more temporary and ephemeral. Um, Badrakali, Badrakali Pachli Bhaira, they do that once every 12 years. And during that year, the performers have to observe Niyam um, mm -hmm. while they're while they're performing and uh, throughout that year but usually in those traditions they cremate the masks after the, at the end of the year so there's a birthing of the deities and then a, uh, a killing them off at the end 
um, I, well, not really killing them. But <laughs> they they die at the end. And um, in Harasiddhi, you have to go to the pits. There's pita puja in the 12 year cycle to re-energize them, but they don't they don't really have a ceremony where they're shut down, except you know they have the closing of the doors of the temple for beginning the new induction, but that's almost in, immediate. So uh, it's a different tradition, definitely. I'm not sure if Sikali um, has a similar induction thing. I, I have to find out about that. Mm -hmm. And just to add on that, like in our city, like there's no mention of uh, Ostamatrika dance. Yeah. Uh, no one mentions about Ostamatrika. It's funny because a lot of people confuse it. They say, oh, Harasiddhi, that's Ashtamatrika. But there's nothing Ashtamatrika about it. Thank you both, right? I have a question for Kedar now that uh, you were saying that uh, the fourth story of temple, right? And, yeah. Uh, is there any significance of this four stories? Is there any story or any significance, right? Is there any real meaning why it is four story rather than three or five? Normally uh, we see that all these temples, they have in the odd number three or one, three, uh, five, something like that. I'm not sure, actually, I'm not sure uh, about the four story. Uh, what is the story behind the four story uh, temple? Um, what I, uh, heard from our, our forefathers were like, uh, it used to be a, like a pit before uh, where the uh, temple is situated. And uh, during the uh, reign of King, uh, is it Pratap Mulla, like he built the temple over there, the four story temple. So uh, I'm not sure the uh, real, uh, you know, uh, many behind the four story. Yeah, there's some inscriptions that date back to Nepal Sambat 786, 87, 89, that was building uh, a tier between and having uh, each of the nine gajurs. So I don't know, but that related to Srinivas Mala uh -huh. uh, from Patan. But there's also earlier Yoga Narendra, right? Mm. Or maybe he's later. I, it was, it's, there's so many dates in the chronology. Um, mm -hmm. If any of you are interested, I can share that with you. It's in this double volume that, that they published in our city. Yeah, thank you. I have uh, one more, one more. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, this, this, uh, this Piakon, right? This your Piakon, how do you connect with the, our tantric ritual or the spirituality? Is there, I mean, is there any story behind it? They do have this like a Dev Boli uh, when they they have, uh, they perform those uh, Bolis behind the mask uh, whilst they are dancing as well. Uh, so that Dev Boli is only known or understood by the Dios only. So uh, it is not like, uh, published or it is not like uh, you know well known by other people so it is only the dears like who know that uh, that they bully uh, that they uh, that they recite whilst they're dancing on the uh, lachi Interesting. so linda would you have like any information on this no? um i think it really comes along in the induction when they initially are inducted there's a time period that they spend in the in the temple with their gurus and um, they really have to learn those songs and that's a very laborious process. They, they, it's, it's not easy from, from what I understand because singing is like one syllable at a time. Um, I've been practicing charya singing with Prajol's temple uh, and that started me getting an appreciation for going slow with recitation. So if you're thinking, you're, you're consciously slowing down and thinking about each of those goals and what do they mean. Uh, I think that's part of it. Um, and there's a constant connection with your guru. So you move up through the tradition. Um, every year they meet with their guru to talk about and go through things. 
So guru means that it's like a, the, it's in their own traditions with the Maharaja. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, in the, the guru in their lineage of deities in the, in the dance drum. They also have a Brahmin, um, uh, Rajapadya Brahmin, who helps with the induction ceremonies. But they don't, from my understanding, they don't go back to him to get teachings or anything like that. Mm -hmm. If there was, if there was a guru, uh, Adi guru, maybe you could say Gayo Juju, the the, the tantric from um, from Patan who brought them down, might have had a hand in that. But that, um, I I don't know, Kedar, do you agree with that? Yeah, uh, yeah, Rajapad, the gurus, like uh, they uh, they have uh, this period of like induction. It's around like uh, six to seven months from September. It starts mm -hmm. uh, every twelve years. So I think they have got like all that uh, information and they pass on uh, the teachings and everything uh, to the new recruits, new inducted uh, dios. Mm -hmm. So, so it sounds like that this need to be preparations for a long period of time. I mean, how long it will be take you? I mean, to do the preparations, to training new people like the every twelve years. So now it's the time. Actually, next year will be the other one. Right. Uh, actually, it is on September 9th or nineteenth this year. Uh, yeah, September 9th, I think. Uh, and uh, my brother is going to be inducted this year as well. Okay. So. Uh, Wow. So it takes like, uh, so he, they have to live in the temple for, I think, minimum of three months, something wow. like that. Okay. And uh, they have to bathe uh, in the evening, uh, like, let's say, one o'clock at night. And they perform the uh, pujas every night and learn those, uh, you know, stuff, uh, learn from the uh, gurus every day. Yeah. So, so that would be like learning the uh, day bullies learn uh, changing their clothes as well so they won't be able to like wear trousers or jumpers they'll, they'll be changing the whole uh, uniform as well so uh, they'll have like a uh, long hair uh, and they're not uh, supposed to eat like chicken and uh, smoke that sort of thing throughout their life mm -hmm. and also the nihari city like the when you are observer you're not allowed to have umbrella and the shoes with that uh, leather leather suit is that uh, yeah. any significance and a meaning for the uh, umbrella and that's a year uh, kind of back in the yeah world. yeah when we were small as well like we were not allowed to wear the leather shoes inside the core uh core area core town the umbrella, uh, not allowed yeah to now like they have they have slightly they have changed now uh they can wear yeah. uh but i'm not sure about like what is the main reason behind it uh, well, later it's make a sense because in a yeah. temple, Muslim in the temples area, because later made with a different animal, wow. so they don't want to be yeah. buried in the temple. So, mm -hmm. but umbrella, I don't know that part. Well, but, I mean, as recently as 2012, when we were there, uh, Terry, my husband, Terry Ellingson, um, was asked to remove his belt when he was videotaping, <laughs> mm -hmm. and that led to some real problems because. He was off on the side where the women, oh, women do a vrata in connection with this, I didn't mention, but they do a vrata uh, in connection with the Pneka, and they light lamps around the perimeter of the dance platform. And Terry was standing there on the side videotaping, and he got a little too close to the lamps, and it lit his pants on fire, and he didn't have his belt, so his pants oh. fell down. <laughs> the women were all screaming. And laughing and throwing caches of water around me. <laughs> oh, me. Wow. Everything. You get that right. <laughs> this is the secret oral transmission right here. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that was fun. Unfortunately, we had another camera person. Yeah, we had uh, filming, and they, he didn't get the episode on camera. Yeah. Too bad. Yeah. So we have very few questions left now. I'm giving the floor to Riwaz Manandar. I think he will, he has some question for you, Linda. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, thank you, Promise Ji. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, actually, I had to ask one question that uh, I have seen in some videos. Uh, during the Gaijatra festival, uh, the priests of Arisiddhi uh, temple, they actually uh, go to swim into the pond, sacred pond, uh, nearby the temple uh, i think they signify it to going into the water yes. so uh, 
do you have any uh, is there any significance of that event or any such hidden meanings Keda, would you like to respond uh, actually like uh, it takes uh, like uh, the swimming it takes like every year mm -hmm. uh, but what happens is like after the swimming uh, on the 12th year period uh, after they finish the swimming day, uh, before they go upstairs to the temple, they stop all the music in our city for a certain period of time uh, whilst this induction is taking place. Uh, so they tie the bells and everything. So there's no music played inside their core area of our city for, uh, for six months or a year or something like that. Uh, so swimming in the pool, like, I'm not sure. Linda, would you want to add anything? Yeah. Well, somebody told me that there was actually a, Mahad, a Mahadev underneath the water in that tank, a little platform, and that that was, they had to swim across as part of the dance. So it's sort of like a, a Dharma swimming dance or something. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I don't know if that's true. And I, I did have a look when they emptied the pond um, to clean it. And I didn't didn't see yeah. uh, uh, Shiva. There wasn't anything in there. Yeah. Or anything. But uh, there, that is the temple pond, and it's connected with the temple. And all along the temple wall, you have inscriptions about the history of and donations and patronage about uh, Harasiddhi. I, I think it's mainly, um, you know, in connection with Mahadev and Shiva during Jane Purnima, everybody. You know, they, they swim in the in Patan at the big uh, five tier temple. What is it? The, I can't think of the name. What is the big temple down there in Patan? Uh, Kumbhishwara. Uh, Kumbhishwara. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kumbhishwara. Kumbhishwara. Yeah. So it could be just that, but um, it also might have something to do again with the Jala, the name of Jala and the water. Yeah, and water. Okay, Connection you, with water. Uh, Linda, I have another question. Where can we uh, get your research uh, about our city uh, in order to uh, read it or to get uh, additional information about it? Okay. Um, I don't know. Kedar, is this yeah. is this volume yeah. for sale somewhere? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, what we can do is like we can uh, you know uh, share this uh, the whole article uh, uh -huh. through Facebook or like other uh, sources. We can do that. Uh, we can arrange for that. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. If you Thank want you. to um, yeah. uh, put your email, I could probably send. What I think I would do is put it up on a Google Drive and yeah. then have you access it because my email, it's a big the PDF, but I don't have the entire volume, which is very interesting, actually. It's mine's one article in there. So do we have this in PDF form? Yeah. I'll we haven't done yet, but we can create one. Yeah. Okay, but thank you very much. Yeah, thank, you. thank you. That is great. Uh, so the idea of uh, having these kind of information in somewhere, that is really great that we would like on behalf of Old Neva organization, USC chapter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we would like to just take that, uh, I mean, uh, that part of the job so that we can create somewhere and all the yes the papers would be in the same place if somebody uh -huh. needs they can just go mm -hmm. there and they can just pull it right. out that's a really good oh, idea Kevin. definitely do you have a uh, a google drive that you could set that up with absolutely yeah we can do that and yeah then we, we could we that. could post it to that or something yeah right so yeah that. Yeah, right after this, uh, I'm in this presentation, then uh, we will just work it out. So Linda, okay. Kedar, Zhu, and again, yep. yes, with uh, Prozul Zhu, we can just see it and we can just think about it. I so think that'd be a great I, idea to just get it available to people. Okay, okay. great. Great. Yeah. That's a very good one that he was. Thank you so much for the equation. And I have one question that came on, on the, uh, this Syamtha, who is from, uh, who is from Kathmandu. And uh, he is really an enthusiast one. Whenever yes, there is any kind of jatra, he is there and he mm -hmm. just do the yes, the live from Kathmandu. So he is very admirer uh, of the jatras. And he has a question that he has seen that, can you tell me why elephant come at the end of Pyakhan? 
Well, the kishi, the big blue kishi, kishi elephant comes in the beginning, not in the very beginning, but it comes early in the day. Early in the morning. Um, uh, I don't know, there's a Brahmin who's brushing his teeth and bathing in a river. And all of a sudden the kishi comes in. And uh, I think it's important to have him because of his connection with Nasadyo and um, making that connection somehow mm -hmm. for all the dancers. Uh, the dancers actually sing inside that kishi. That's really interesting to see. Um, but in the, then in the afternoon or in the evening after the battle with in the Ramayana, then Kishi comes back and they rush him up and down, run him back and forth. Um, and is Kedar, is there a guti for that? Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, there is one small guti uh, for yeah. the Kishi as well. I think it's sort of a celebratory thing, but yeah, I think they also associate him with Indra at that point, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for us, like when we were kids, uh, it was a bit of like the last episode uh, with the Kissy was more of like entertainment for us, <laughs> just running yeah. around behind the <laughs> Kissy and right. going around and around in circles. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's more like the um, Hulu Kishi in Kathmandu at that yeah. point, um, uh, which is a white Indra's Kishi during Indra Jatra. There's a Hulu Kishi um, yeah. that sort of run up and down. During the, oh. during the Jatra. Um, but I think at that point, they play, the, the Diyojas who play the instruments stand up and they're standing up and playing when that happens. So they, they're acknowledging it's the end of the drama. It's, you can celebrate, hooray. Mm. I, don't know, least, I don't know the real reason why they do it at the end. Thank you both. He has one more question that he is asking is there any relation between Jalapyakya and Fulchoki Gades? No. Is there a Fulchoki Ganesh? Where is the Fulchoki Ganesh? Sorry, it's not Fulchoki Ganesh. It is Fulchoki Gades. Fulchoki Mai? Uh, yeah, Fulchoki Mai, you can say, right? Yeah. Because our city was uh, brought from uh, Fulchoki Mai the last, uh, at the last uh, you know, uh, time. Um, Gaya Baja, like he, he was in Fulchak area and he, uh, with his tantric bidis, like all the gods, like who were coming down from heaven, like he put the tantric and he was just uh, holding them. Uh, he was bringing them to uh, Patan actually from Fulchak area. So when he reached, uh, when the whole troop reached uh, to uh, in Taiba, they heard a uh, different noise over there. And they said, like, okay, we're not going to... Uh, that was a you know, pig. pig yeah, cried, it was a pig, right? wasn't it? Yeah. Yes, yeah, a pig right. cried. Yeah. Yeah. Pig cried. So they had to reach Parton before uh, early in the morning. Am I right, Linda? Yeah, something like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Then uh, from Tiber, like, they woke up and they just stood and they just walked uh, towards Parton. And they reached uh, an area in her city uh, called Niva, uh, where all the city... Uh, goddesses are uh, in the store. So over there, like they heard, uh, uh, there cock was a crow, cock, right? cock, cock yeah, crows, yeah. Cock crows yeah. in the morning. In the, in the morning. So uh, when the cock crow in the morning, like uh, they said, like, I'm going to take 100 steps from here and wherever I reach, I'm going to, you know, you place myself over there and that will be my domain. So uh, that is why like the, every dance drama, like all the horse before any dance drama takes place, they have to go to this uh, Siddhi, uh, Niva place. They go there, they do their first uh, uh, dance, a uh, short dance over there. And they come running from the top, uh, taking as if like they were taking a hundred steps and they come to Lachi, the main area where the temple is placed now. Mm -hmm. So there is a very, very strong link between Harsidhi and Fulchoki. It is a very yeah. strong one. Yeah. Definitely. Mm. And, then, and then there's the, on the 12 year Mela, they actually go up to the shrine, up of, yes. the top of Fulchoki. It's not an easy thing to do because they get up at like two in the morning 
to one in the morning and start climbing that mountain. And it's a big mountain to climb. Um, I've made it twice up there. <laughs> uh, it's That's very beautiful. Including with one motorcycle crash. Yeah. So it's been a great, yes, having those kind of information, right, disseminated to our audience. And even, yes, I'm really enlightened about the heresy and the Diopiaha. So because of the time that we already has covered so many things, but still there are so many things and we would be happy to do, yes, uh, in some other time, again, yes, to continue to have this, maybe the second part we can say, or we can come up with some other ideas on the Hari Siddhi. It's been really, I mean, uh, people are really as admiring and they have been sending a lot of, I mean, uh, positive vibes to us through the Facebook. Oh, good. So yeah, because of the time limit that, yes, <laughs> Uh, um, I, I would like to thank yes, both of you, our esteemed scholars, right, Linda, Dr. Linda uh, Eltes, as well as uh, Kedar Marjan. So at the end, I would like to invite my colleague, uh, Prajol Ratnavadrasarya, and who is the, yes, the director of this heritage division of Old Neva Organization USA chapter. So for your closing remarks, I would like to invite Prajol Gurjo. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So I'm like the kind of a speech list for for the whatever you have been presentation. So it's like the more than you know, I'm learning so much things. It is even like the little little things there. It's like it's so amazing that I don't know how to how to make this. I mean, living in Nepal and growing up in Nepal, even. I've never again gone through that way. Even I must be gone to see this dance, but knowing about the inside the dance and understanding a little bit about the inside the dance, it's making so much. Uh, this the culture is so rich, and then having that you know, deity is getting transformed and the deity becomes part of the bodies, and it just it just like a beyond than my my thinking. As far you know, as far. I am like, a, I'm a more professionally dancer as well. So in the Charya dance, I mean, we do with the trance and the deities and bring it to the deities and transforming as a deities. And uh, we try to do basically like every day when you need to dance, we need to meditate, we need to recite the mantras and transformations is naturally happening. But those like a whole uh, uh, communities involved whole lineage people carry on. And also the, you know, I mean, so you mentioned that with the Brikama Ditte, which means the Lispi period. It's been carried on from the Lispi period. It's been the thousands of years it's been carried on. And and also the, it's just like a learning about the new, completely new for me, like even like the the elephant's guard, which is like a Riddhi city, there's a sons and, you know, son, two sons, you know, and then the Munjusri came there with the, uh, we call that um, Barada and Mochida, but it's just like a Pulucho, Majo, and uh, uh, Dilucho, Majo. I mean, the Dilucho and the Pulucho is basically mount, name of the mountains. And they mm -hmm. call Barada and Mochida, that's the two concert of the Munjusri. It's also part of that. So that means some things which is really deeply connected to the, to the Newar or Nepal's originations of the Kathmandu Valley, something right. to do with that way. So I was just fascinated and I hope we can spend more time with do, you know, learn more about this. And I will just learn more things with this, uh, always very fascinating with this all. So I said, thank you for the, you know, Linda and Linda, I have a great connection and whatever you mentioned that those people is my really connections with the Rajendra sister is my teacher and Saptamuni Bhadrachari is my father's colleague. So I used to connect it always with them. And actually the, the Saptamuni, we also travel uh, to the Hong Kong in 1986 with the Saptamuni. He is also the good in the Charya Niti as well. So, mm -hmm. and it's very fascinated everything. So I should get thank you, thank you. So, and for both of you and we'll keep in touch with that. So every month, just make sure. And uh, I was not confirming who will be the next one. So uh, I was talking to the- Yeah, we, 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 we'll announce in Facebook, no, Prasadu? Yeah, definitely, yeah. 
and with the with the all these questions again still there are questions but i just feel that right maybe we should give uh, our speakers maybe one minute each for their closing remarks too right it's really overwhelming i mean but yeah. still yeah there are so many questions there are so many things coming up but rather than going in the questions if you if we have missed anything that you really wanted to say anything yeah so first i'll go to linda and then i'll go to the kedarji you're fine linda well, I'd like to once again thank everyone uh, to you, Prajal and Pramesh, for inviting me uh, to do a presentation. It's just, it's just a really wonderful opportunity uh, for me because I um, just retired and and I've been waiting and waiting to work more intensively on my materials, and this really set the fire uh, for me to be able to start doing that again. Um, and it's it's just uh, I can't thank the people in Paul enough. I mean, it's uh, all the people, the Newar families who helped me. I really feel a debt of gratitude, and uh, especially the people in Hari Uh There was Jill Maju. She's passed away now. She was a, a wonderful assistant. Rajendra took me to see her uh, in her family because he knew her. He had been to to be treated by her, and he said, "Let's see if she has some ideas." And uh, and she was just full of information. She said, I know the songs of all the Sadhisibi gods. <laughs> and so we sat and listened to her and she brought in some Gyojis to talk. But it, I just really appreciate this opportunity and um, I'm very grateful. Um, and I look forward to communicating more often with all of you. Thank you, Linda. Now, <laughs> now let me go to Kedar Maharajan. Yeah, uh, thank you very much uh, to everyone. Uh, thanks for inviting us. Uh, yeah, it's a great opportunity to like uh, be on this platform. Uh, it's great uh, to have like to share all our views and what we've known, what we've learned. Um, actually, like I got the opportunity to learn more about the Harsi uh after I finished my school. Uh, we, I was in a boarding school in St. Xavier's at Godavari and it was a boarding till like class six uh, in 1985 when my father was inducted. So uh, we, I learned a lot from him because I used to, uh, we used to stay in our uh, old house uh, in the inner town of the village. And we lived there for like six months, uh, seven months over there whilst he was inducted. So uh, I learned a lot from there. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, the main thing now, the main biggest concern over here now is the, uh, the land over there in Hersi, the, the endowed land. Now, our city is transforming from like from the agricultural uh, aspect. Now it's moving towards like urban area. It's like a built-in area. I was showing the pictures and the drone photos, uh, drone video to uh, Linda yesterday. Uh, so there, there are a bit of like changes coming around. Now we need to tackle and we need to uh, see how we can move uh, from there. Uh, maybe adapt to the changes or like otherwise like it'll just be extinct. So let's see. It would be great like if we can discuss uh, this with the team from RCD as well, uh, learn their views, learn their uh, you know, experience as well, and we can discuss further on this. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah. Thank you, Kedarzu. I'm happy to yes, do one session with you. I have the next show with the e where you can speak in Kemba or the Nepal Vasa as well, or we can do it in English. Either way is fine. We can yeah. bring some concerned people. I mean, the uh, people from her city and we'll do one episode there. So I'll be in contact with you. Oh, cheers, thanks. Yeah. Thank that you so much. Great. Yeah, thank yeah. you. So Prasanzu, I'm just coming back to you now. <laughs> we we have to end the program, but it's ongoing. It's very interesting. That's so right. do you have anything to add at the end? Otherwise, yeah, we're going to end this. It will be wonderful to take it a group to see this 12 years, you know, celebrations. I mean, so from the, the Americas and London's, you know, just to have the dedicated to be there for like a whole week of a program and I learned lots of things. I mean, it will be really, really wonderful to, this is like the mind blowing, you know, I mean, it's rituals and dance. That's what I teach about uh, without dance and the music, there's no way to liberation. So this is like the liberation path, which has been carried on for the thousands of years. And mm -hmm. That's we need to share this, you know, even like I, I did say, like uh, even I grow, growing up in Kathmandu Valley, I mean, we just don't get that much, you know, deeper into the, the learning about uh, deeper. But this is like, a, it is such a, I mean, deep and it's such an amazing, amazing culture. 
this will be you know world should be know about this we are hidden in the you know in a corner which is nobody talk about nobody say anything this is like a great great i mean to have the, you know to at least that this platform it's a little bit you know moving forward so we will want to keep continuous a little more also have other class to teach so i need to go move on to so and uh, well well yeah thank you promise thank you thank you Kirar. and then so let's thank you for linda this is great great so good to know more about you know a little bit about linda also i mean linda i know him her from like the back in the 80s and you know it just never you know connected with the, the i mean so i do know like the, what you're doing lots of work but you have so much so much video so we need to bring it that out to the world so yeah how to we should we should have just a video only uh, session <laughs> I could just have some video. Yeah. yeah i will be post this one into the youtube youtube so this will okay. be good to have a save in the youtube those days so that's i'm trying to do more so <laughs> Great, well said, uh, Linda, that's right. Possibly we may can work or we can just create a project where we can just document this and we can just store somewhere, right? And for that, right, Ulnewa organization, US chapter is always there. So we have been trying to be a little bit uh, innovative so that we can show our culture, show our heritage, show our tradition, show our civilization, the Newa civilization in front of the whole world. And for that, we need a lot of support, a lot of help, and whatever resources that we can grab it and we can come across and we can create a, really a good platform so that we can showcase all Newa civilization. Mm -hmm. So saying so, thank you so much to the, all the audiences in Facebook, as well as all the participants, distinguished participants, the scholars, right, from different parts of the world, uh, so many different parts of the world. Uh, I mean, the, from the Europe, as well as we have some from Canada, some London, France, and so many places. But anyway, thank you so much. On behalf of all new organization, U.S. chapter, uh, we are signing off now, Prajal Gurju and myself. And once again, thank you, Linda and the Kedar Maharajan. We'll be in touch with you. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, and for, thank you very much.